They just have to fill out the FAFSA and they fill it in. On this one, it just asks for their contact information and where they heard about it and if they attended a workshop or not, and they're submitted into it. Okay. Um, Albuquerque Community Foundation has 24 different scholarships. If you have not, um, if you're here locally and you've not looked at these, please look at them. But it also can be, it's not just Albuquerque. It can, there are some that are for anybody in the state. Some of them are very specific. Like the first one is for residents um, from Quay County. Um, the second one is anybody that lives in a manufactured house. Um, the Sussman Miller provides um, help with that gap. Um, and I think I have a slide for that one. Um, and then youth and foster care. Again, if we see them check yes to foster care, red flag, let me look up that scholarship as well. Um, if you're in the Albuquerque Metro, the James Ledwith, if anybody that um, has overcome adversity or facing hardship, a lot of us. <laughs> um, Kiwanis Club of Albuquerque Scholarship Fund, um, it kind of gives specifics. Manuel Lujan, there's 24 designated high schools that have a $500 scholarship they can give. The Susan QB is the music scholarship in the Woodcock family for anybody that is um, going into fields of science and math. The Sussman Miller, the one I just mentioned that fills the gap. This is a nice one because it says, do you have unmet need? Okay, we're going to try to help you meet that need. If you have unmet, unmet need between $500 and $8,000, um, they are going to have you do this. You have to fill out the FAFSA, and preference will be given to students with the lower EFC. Um, so just know it exists. Um, it is offered through the Albuquerque Community Foundation. The Albuquerque Hispano Chamber of Commerce also has a couple scholarships and there's Ruben handing out the scholarship to one of their students there. Um, but again, there's three different types of scholarships available um, on there. Keep in mind, some of these don't come open until later. So if you go to the websites and you're still seeing the 2022 app, just give it a little bit and um, keep checking back. Um, if you reside within 50 miles from Kirtland Air Force Base and the student is a dependent of an armed forces personnel and they can be retired, they can, fill, they can apply for the Spouses Club um, scholarship um, and it opens in February. Um, NMAA, we often think of NMAA as our sports, right? Um, but it is our athletics and activities. So if a student is involved in any of the athletics or activities through NMAA, um, have them look at those scholarships. So there's an activity scholarship, extraordinary participation, Dana Lucille, Lucille Wood, um, lots of options. Those I believe are due February 1st or April 1st, um, but check their, check the NMAA website. The New Mexico True Scholars, this one, they must have a completed FAFSA on file. So I'm not lying when I tell them there's scholarships that require them, they actually do exist. Um, but it is somebody that is interested in the agricultural industry or economy of food or an agriculture, which is hugely needed here in our state. Um, and so $5,000 for that one. The Organ Transplant Association of New Mexico provides a scholarship. It is just an essay about why organ donors and organ transplants are important. Um, and it is always due on February 1st, which is um, Valentine's Day. So it's the heart day. So just think of that. But a 2.0 or higher. I have students that say, oh, my GPA is not high enough to get a scholarship. Yes, it is. Um, we're fine. We can do this. So you just have to tell them there's some out there for everybody. Um, it just takes a little bit of time to find them, and it is almost like a full-time job to apply for them, but it's worth it if they can get some money. Jiffy Loop, what drives you? Absolutely love this poster this year because Daniel Fang is from La Cueva High School, um, but this one is one that if you aren't encouraging your kids to apply for, encourage them. Our school got $500 because we had the most applications last year, so your school too could get the most applications next year, okay? Um, so they give away $5,000. It's only for our surrounding states, um, but it's local Jiffy Loops that give the money. Um, and they do a video of what drives them, okay? Parnell Law does a distracted driving scholarship and it is a, um, it's an essay um, and they're giving $5,000 to three applicants. Toyota, our local dealerships and this, these, 
um, zip codes might, I think they're the most recent, but just um, keep your eye out for it. This one is hard for me because it seems like they change the link every year and it's it's for some reason through 100.3 the peak. Just keep that in mind because they give away $60,000 in scholarships um, through our local Toyota dealerships. Daniel's fund is due on October 15th at 4 p.m. This is another one that is very good for our New Mexico students. So they have to be a resident of Colorado, New Mexico, Utah, or Wyoming. Um, they do have to be a citizen or permanent resident with a 3.0 GPA. Test scores are on there. And then meet financial eligibility requirements. So let's see, they must have an adjusted gross income of $85,000 or less. And this says the 2020 taxes. I'm not sure if that is now 2021, but check, take a look at their website. Um, and then they're going to give $5,000 for each um, additional, you can add $5,000 for each additional dependent not in college or $15,000 for any dependent that is in college, which can increase that adjusted gross income. So take a look at this for students um, and really encourage them to apply. Um, but what it does is it's going to cover um, it's a comprehensive college scholarship. So it will provide um, a last dollar scholarship from what I understand to help pay for what financial aid and other scholarships don't cover. So, um, so Hispanic Scholarship Fund, hopefully you are all very familiar with this. Um, so high school students, a 3.0, college students, 2.5. And that's something that's very important is that scholarships aren't just for high school seniors. You can apply every single year that you're in college. I, Hispanic Scholarship Fund is a good one. They still have to complete the FAFSA for that or the state-based financial aid app. Um, it, we don't have a state-based app, um, but I don't know. Does anybody know if we can use any of our school-based ones for this one? Don't know either. Sorry. So um, if you have a student that can't do that, um, there are apps available at each of the schools. Um, we can talk about they're going to talk about in a little bit. So scholarships by major is another one to look for, um, especially if it's a unique major or if it's um, a, like women in engineering. Um, there's usually scholarships about that. Those are ways to search for it. The Albuquerque Community Foundation also has um, the Andrew Peach Memorial Scholarship um, for automotive technology or applied technology. David Woodling um, is looking for machine tool technology and welding. Um, so just look for those. If your students are undocumented or international, this website has some information for you, the scholarships A to Z, um, and then um, it, the immigrants rising in those, there are some on there. They're not as um, prevalent, they're not as available. And I have students say, well, can I apply to this one? And I said, if it says that you have to be a US resident, then no, or no, you can't apply for it. But if it doesn't say that, let's go ahead and try or let's research it some more. So tell them that they can still look there are scholarships, especially some of ours that are just for our Loquiva students. It does not matter what their um, citizenship status is. Okay. This is the big future scholarship. If you had previously heard of the College Board Opportunity Scholarship, they changed the name to the Big Future Scholarship this year. And this is the one where if they do their FAFSA, they submit and say they did their FAFSA, they get put into the drawing for a $500 scholarship or $40,000 scholarships. It used to be that you had to complete all six items to be considered for the $40,000 scholarships, but they are drawing $40,000 scholarships every single month now. So every entry can get you into that. So I do believe we had one in we had one in New Mexico get the 40,000. My school had two of the $500 ones. I heard of a couple others. So it's a na nationwide scholarship, but our kids are eligible and they can get it. So if they build a college list, um, I think that one might not be eligible for them. And like some of the dates are coming up, like practice for the SAT October 31st, explore scholarships, strengthen their college lists, complete the FAFSA and apply to colleges, things they should be doing anyway. Okay. 
UNM has an amazing private scholarship list on their website. Um, I have three lists, UNM, NMSU, and Texas Tech. They all have general scholarship lists that anybody can apply for, even though it's on their website, anybody can apply for them. And it saves me the work of having to go recreate these lists, so use them. So UNM has theirs um, just on their scholarship office website under resources. Um, NMSU has one. They did change their website. If anybody got a thing about their website not working, my whole website blew up because I have them everywhere. Um, it is just different. So um, navigate to it again, and it's there. And then Texas Tech also has one. In Texas Tech, you can sort by the deadline. So you can say what's due in the month of October that I can apply for. And you can expand each category and it tells you, some of them say you have to be a Texas resident. Okay, not gonna do that. But then, you know, some of them, the Women in Aerospace Foundation Scholarship, maybe I can. Some of those might say they have to be a freshman, sophomore, junior, or senior in college. Okay, we'll save that one for next year. But some of them say high school senior. So it's just a nice place if they're wanting to look more than they can. Also keep looking for those scholarships for minorities, our Bureau of Indian Education, lots and lots of resources out there for our students. Um, these are some other websites. Again, um, this is all gonna be on his website. Um, the College Board does have a scholarship search feature um, also on it. Um, CapEx, Career One Stop, lots of different places. Military options. Um, this was big for my family, um, but military academies, if your student is interested in military service, please make sure that they have access to this information or um, that you can get them in contact. But military academies like our Air Force Academy, West Point, um, all of those, those are full rides and they're $400,000 of education for free. Um, they do have a service commitment um, after, um, after they um, graduate from there. But the process to apply for the military academy begins in the junior year of their high school junior year. Okay. ROTC um, can be, everyone's a little bit different, but they apply for those fall, early spring of their senior year. Um, it can be a flat amount of um, all tuition, 10,000 towards room reward, monthly stipend. Um, they pay for books, but they do serve in the military upon graduation. GI Bill, if they are active duty or reserve, um, the GI Bill is there, but also while they're active duty, they get all tuition um, paid for um, as tuition assistance. But under the GI Bill, they get tuition fees, books, living allowance also. You might have some students say, I have the post 9-11 GI Bill, and that's where their parents can um, assign their GI Bill to the student. It is important in those cases, just find the Veterans Affairs Office at the campus and get them connected with them because there's lots of paperwork, lots of questions. And on each campus, there's a Veterans Affairs representative, okay? Um, and then National Guard, they can serve um, that one weekend a month and two weeks a year and um, get tuition assistance and, military, and a monthly stipend. So just different options. QuestBridge is another program. The deadline is coming up very quickly for this one, or it was just last 20, this, it was just this week, came up very quickly for me, I missed it, no. Um, but it's definitely, if your students are looking out of state, if they're low income and high achieving, it is always one that I try to identify those kids at the end of junior year, beginning of senior year and say, you're looking out of state, let's get you nominated for this or get you on this because it can be a full ride for them um, to go to very prestigious universities. WUI um, is, I hesitate to say it's a scholarship program, but that's what students think it is. So I'm just gonna say that, but it's a tuition reduction. So WUI is the Western Undergraduate Exchange. If you have a student that is from the West, which we are, and going to a participating college in the West, um, then they will pay 150% of in-state tuition instead of out-of-state tuition. So let's say in-state tuition is 10,000, out-of-state's 20,000, they would only pay 15,000. 
Okay, so it is a tuition reduction. Not all schools in the West participate. Um, some of them, it's only for certain majors. Some of them say, I only have 10 scholarships. Some say you have to apply. Some say you're automatically given it. It's all different. But this website, it does a great job of telling you who's there. And then they can drill down and see, well, who's it for and what can I do? And it can take you directly out to their website. So just know about WUI as an option. Um, reciprocal, this is one of those that um, parents think that everybody in our surrounding states is going to give us a tuition reduction, and that's just not true. Um, <laughs> I have to be very clear. I'm like, no, not everybody. And they're like, oh, wooey. And I'm like, well, not everybody. But we do have some examples. So Texas Tech, University of Houston, um, I think some of our other Texas schools, but those are my two examples. Tuition's $900 more than their in-state tuition. So you're basically getting Texas in-state tuition because you're from New Mexico. And if you get a scholarship of $1,000 or more, they give you in-state and you keep your scholarship. So you are getting in-state. Out of state, all New Mexico students receive in-state tuition. Fort Lewis in-state tuition if you meet the um, criteria um, and they have to be let's see have a GP of a 3.0 um, it can it cannot be combined with other institutional tuition scholarships and so some students will say oh I'm going to get the tuition reduction and I'm going to get this merit scholarship and it's going to stack and everything's going to be paid for and that's not the case for some of these reciprocal scholarships so you kind of have to read through that with them. Other places to look, parent employers. Um, it's oftentimes when even where we work or you know where my husband works, I don't know whether they offer a scholarship, you know, and you wouldn't know until they're a senior in high school and it, it pertains to you. So ask your employer, do you have a scholarship for kids? Um, any community organizations that are part of um, banks and credit unions have quite a few for seniors. Um, so check with banks and credit unions, churches, any other organizations, just ask. Um, I always have students that are like, I want to apply for a scholarship now. And I say, well, they're awarding money to use next year. So the vast majority of them are for seniors to apply for because they're trying to award this money now for them. But there are some out there that they can start looking at. Um, just not very many. So tips for students, um, have a professional email account. Um, too hot for you is not appropriate. Um, <laughs> make sure you're making a good impression. Um, it's, it's something that you don't know who's reading it um, and that you wanna make sure that they're not making a judgment about who you are because what your email says. Essays, if you're writing an essay, save it, make a copy of it, write your second essay. Don't ever just write over it because by the time you get to the fifth scholarship, you can take a paragraph from one and a paragraph from two and add them together and save yourself some time because every essay is going to be a little bit different in the content that it's looking for, but you can combine all of them. So save them separately. Um, don't say why I deserve the scholarship is because I need money. We got that. Um, say why you're a good investment. Make sure that you have someone read it, have your English teacher read it, um, have some proofreading done. Um, the one thing about having someone you know read it is some of our kids have gone through some stuff in life. They've overcome some obstacles, but it's their normal. They don't know any different, so they downplay it in their essays. But if they have somebody read it and they're like, this was huge, you need to elaborate on this or talk more about this, or you didn't even cover it all, they can help provide that insight. Um, don't write it the night before. Um, make sure you answer the question. Make sure you also address it to the right organization um, and not say, I want this Albuquerque Community Foundation scholarship when you're applying to NMEAF. No, you don't require an essay, but you know, whatever. So just make sure it's right there. Then some of them are very specific about instructions. We've got one at our school through our PTA that it, if it does not have single-sided and one staple, then they won't look at it. And I'm like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> so I go through and help the students make sure theirs were all the right way. So, but um, so one staple, if it's two sided, if it's a sealed transcript, if it's po the deadlines postmarked or received, um, if the recommender needs to send it to them directly or it needs to be included, 
Everybody can write a scholarship to do anything that they want. I could write a scholarship and give it to somebody from Florida because I, that's where I'm from. And I could put whatever requirements on, collect applications and give money. That's what the private scholarships are, okay? Um, again, we went through most of that. Um, don't rule themselves out. Often there aren't very many students applying for these scholarships. Um, I have one <clears throat> that's through the Albuquerque Community Foundation just for my seniors and nobody applied for it. I only have 400 seniors, I said, and nobody applied for it. It's for language learning or reading disability. So we identified some students through our special ed program, got a hold of two of them. Only one of them filled out the application, so she got the money. Like, it's just like pulling teeth to get these kids to try to get free money. But just tell them, a lot of them think that, oh, there's better candidates. They're smarter people than me. They're, you know, I'm not going to get it. And that's just simply not the case. Being aware of scams. Don't ever pay money to get a scholarship. Don't ever do something that says your scholarship's guaranteed or your money back. Okay, well, we weren't supposed to pay money. Um, you can't get this information anywhere else. If any of you have looked at those scholarship search sites, they're all over the place. Um, don't ever give credit card or bank account information or processing fee. Um, <laughs> this one I laugh at, this last one. You've been selected, um, but you never entered. They forget that they entered these things, you know, like the NMEAF. So I tell them, I'm like, if you ever get an email from NMEAF, this is legitimate. And so I try to make sure that they know these people are good. Um, but I warn them too much, I think, sometimes. But um, encourage them to take that ACT, SAT. I know that the SAT is our state test, and some of our students still didn't take it last year. And we're seeing a lot of colleges still going test optional but I am starting to hear some colleges come back to it and there are some scholarships that still require it. So just get a score, lock it in, have it on file if you need it. Um, at the same time, have them look at schools and the merit-based aid that they're offering. Do they have to apply for it? Are they automatically considered? How does all of that work? Um, if their score is close to the next level, like let's say that they're looking at, um, can't think of what it is. Like, let's say a school goes back to requiring tests and they have a 24. And if I got a 25, I'd get this much money. Texas Tech is actually test optional. I'm going to use this, them as my example. They're test optional, but if your test score helps you get a higher scholarship, they want you to submit it. So let's say that their test score was one point away from that. Go retake it and see if you can get more money. Um, taking a test is, if it can give me more money, I'll take it. 